In this lesson, we're going to build the condensation for our bottle. Okay, so before we begin, I just want to go over a few changes I made in between lessons. Uh, one was I changed the render settings so that we had a render at 1280 by 720. I also turned off these two side lights here as uh, I didn't really feel that they were helping this render out. Um, it's really a case by case scenario and, and uh, in this uh, case uh, the HDRI lighting worked out just fine for me. Um, I also went in for my material and the last setting that I, I got was 0 0.08 for our max distance. Everything else uh, remained the same. Uh, this number is going to change quite a bit for you. It really depends on the distance of the light from the bottle. Uh, or the scaling of your bottle and uh, very small numbers uh, greatly affect this so if you're not getting the overall look that I'm getting you may want to just play with this number uh, I, I find the best method is to start with a larger number and work your way down until um, you get the look that you're looking for and uh, if you find that you're getting in you're just not quite getting it, it's not enough it's not intense enough uh, Try increasing the uh, intensity of your light as well and play around with the rotation and the angle of the light until you, you kind of get that look that you're going for. Uh, here's a render of what I got. Um, I, oh, there's another change here too I want to mention. is uh, I took the uh, beer geometry and I raised the vertices up just a little bit because I was getting too much amber look right here on the bottom. And I wanted to get that fall off right around here as well. So I just raised that up and you can see where it's dropped. Okay, and we also have a, a yellow glow around the side of the bottle, which we're going to get rid of post in post-production. Okay, so to start with the condensation, we're going to need to create our condensation elements. So I'm going to go to pr my perspective mode and move out here to the place where we can work. And I'm going to create a sphere. Okay, so with the sphere, uh, segments of 14 should be fine. I'm going to throw on a mesh smooth, followed by a noise modifier because we want to make this look kind of random. And I'm also going to throw on an FFD333 modifier so we can play around with the random shape and scaling of this model. So we'll just open one of the FFD up there and just play around with these control points a little bit here. Randomize this really. Pull that down, pull these in, and try and flatten this out. Okay, so I'm also going to go into the noise modifier, and the uh, lower the scale, the more it's going to affect our model. So we'll set this down to about 10, and we're just going to up our X, our Y, and our Z until we find something that we're looking for. In our case, our scale is still a little bit big, so we'll just bring that down to about, looks like 5 is going to work for us. Okay, and we can see that our object here is uh, it's a little, not it's more like a droplet than condensation. We want to get this a little bit flatter, so kind of conform to the bottle a little bit, like that. Okay, all right, so that's one. And to get another one, what we're going to do is just duplicate the whole object. I actually want to move this in this scale. It doesn't really matter, but. Uh, to get a different object altogether, I'm just going to change our seed until we find something that we're looking for. And that one seems to be a bit warped. And it looks like all of them are a bit warped except for that first one we did. And that's because our scale is just a little bit big. So we can just, or a little bit small. We're going to just increase our scale until we find something a little bit different. You can always go in and play with your FFD points here and just kind of shape this to something that you're looking for. You want to bring those in and this in. Okay, and we'll do this one more time. And we'll change the seed. Okay, great. Alright, so now to get this onto our model, we just need to group these objects. And we'll just call it condensation. and we'll select our bottle just kind of so we can get close to it uh, to create what we're going to do is use a particle system to emit particles and by default they're automatically going to start on the bottle so what we need to do is create that particle system first so under standard primitives we'll just 
click on that drop down and we're going to choose particle systems from here we'll choose a pf source which stands for particle flow we'll just drag it emitter out into the scene it doesn't really matter where this go because the particles are going to emit onto the bottle however if you were to use emitter you'd want to position this correctly and the arrow shows where the particles are going to go so we're going to go to frame zero and hit six on our keyboard and six will open up a particle view and from here we can see the nodes that create this particle system So make this a little bit larger okay so the render node just uh, displays how much is visible what kind what is showing and uh, just overall render visibility we can even turn off this light bulb and it won't render okay so in the render geometry let's just make sure that are visible set to 100 so we can actually see in the viewport what's going to get rendered and on that note we'll even go down to display and make sure that this is set to 100 as well okay so first let's talk about the birth uh, we have it's starting on frame 0 it's emitting until frame 30 and during that time is emitting 200 particles but what we want is to have all the particles already spawned at frame 0 so we'll have it start at frame negative 1 we'll have it stop at frame 0 and we'll have 200 particles for now okay so if I reset this you can see at frame 0 we've got 200 particles and they're all emitting downwards so now we need to get them to uh, get to them to the position where we want them to start so what we'll do is we'll choose our position object, here it is here, and we'll drag and drop that onto position icon. All right, from here we can choose add, and we can just click on our bottle. All right, so now you can see that the particles are somewhat on the bottle, but then we get a whole bunch down here, and why is this happening? Well, this is actually because of our speed. Our speed is already, when the particles were born, they already had speed inherited to them. We can actually decrease our speed, and you'll see it go right up into the bottle, and then past it because it has a negative speed. Well, we're not going to want speed on these particles at all, so we're just going to delete that node. And now you can see that the particles are on the bottle. Okay, so to get this to display the geometry that we made, we need to make a position instance, or shape instance, sorry. And we're just going to drag and drop that right onto our shape. Okay, so in the shape instance, we're going to click none up here in the corner, just move that in, and we're going to go click on our condensation group. All right, with that selected, nothing's happened. That's because we haven't told the particle flow to display it. To get it to display, I'll just bring up our particle view, and under display, we're just going to choose geometry, and we'll choose that both. So even if we have it selected, it'll still show the geometry. Okay. So things got a little crazy here. Our, our condensations look like they're a little bit too big. So we can just go into our particle view and under position object, we can scroll down a little bit. Actually, sorry, under shape, we'll scroll down and we can decrease the scale on these objects until we get something a little bit closer to what we're looking for. Okay, so right off the bat we see the particles are looking fine, but the objects themselves seem to be the same group that we've created, the same three objects over and over, just in different orientations. Well, to fix that, you can just click on group members. Oh, I'll bring this over, sorry. You can click on group members. And what this will do is tell particle flow to take one of the objects from the group and assign that to the particle at a random seed. So we'll hit group members, and there you go. You can see that the particles are completely random all over the bottle. We can, from here, uh, increase the scale. I'm going to have to try and make some room here. You can even increase the variation, which will give this a little bit more variation. So what I like to do is try and find the variation that I'm looking for and then adjust the scale. So 1.5 should work. Okay. And if you want to adjust the amount of condensation that you have on the bottle, you can just go into the berth and up the amount of particles. In our case, I'm probably going to use about 400 particles. Okay, so in the next tutorial, we're going to assign a material to this condensation and uh, do a test render. And from there, we'll go on and start creating the ice chunk that's going to hang off the side of the bottle.